it's like okay, so we're gonna be talking about the midheaven, the tenth house. You know, that house ruled by Capricorn and Saturn that pretty much dictates your public image in a sense where um, it's how people see you online or at work and yeah, and how you achieve things. You know, I'm going to be talking about how each midheaven um, achieves goals, I guess. That's how what I'm exactly going to talk about. Where the drive lands in the midheavens and how they achieve said goals that are long term. Anyways, cue that cringy intro, fam. Um, why am I, um, doing the Midheaven first? Well, I'm gonna tell you why. Basically, um, the midheaven, like I said, is your public image, your public persona, your public whatever, how you act at work or on the internet. And where are we right now? The internet. The beautiful place called the internet. You don't know what you're gonna find here. You're gonna find some really weird shit. But other than that, you're not seeing my ascendant at the moment. You're seeing my very, um, influenced Midheaven. So, that's what you're seeing for me right now. You're not seeing what I, what face I put on at parties or, like, the face I put on when I first meet people. You're seeing a totally different face from me. <laughs> and usually, um, when you see um, someone's content or hear it or I'm not really sure you know when when you see someone on social media or hear someone on social media you are probably you you are getting their midheaven and usually the midheaven squares the ascendance mine doesn't but usually that's the case so basically I guess I am just going to talk about what you know from the internet and the people from the internet rather than um, what you'd see from these people on the internet at parties. I might do another video explaining how the sun signs would be at parties if you want me to, but we're going to be talking about how the midheavens conquer their goals. So let's move on. Okay, number six, Virgo. Um, I'm going to split up this video in more parts because Fuck. It's just gonna take 20 minutes again. I'm not dealing with that and I lost a lot of footage and I'm pissed. But anyways, so Virgo. When this is in the 10th house cusp, this makes someone who wants to be seen publicly as someone who helps others, um, is selfless, you know, a hard worker, is pretty organized. You know, that's pretty much Virgo. They look like they have their shit together. So if you see someone on the internet who has their shit fucking together, they're probably in Earth Midheaven, but it's probably going to most likely be Virgo if they really have their fucking shit together. And they're pretty organized, you know, they have like that nice DIY room, yeah, that, that's a Virgo for you. But, um, basically, this is, uh, you know, Earthy Mercury, you know, all that fun jazz. Um, these Midheavens like to help others, like um, what's it, Leo and Cancer midheavens, but they don't have this emotional, um, intelligence like Cancer that, you know, panders on others through that, and they know they don't have that, you know, emotional tapping sense in them. They're not manipulative as Cancer, and, you know, it's all good, man. Um, with Leo, you know, Virgos and Leos are both humble, but Virgos don't like the spotlight 24-7, They'd rather leave that to Leo. You know, this is a sign after Leo, and honestly, these two signs are very different from being right next to each other. It's kind of funny because Leo's sister sign, Aquarius, the Earth sign that Aquarius is right next to, they're fucking similar to an extent that, you know, Capricorn's just a stubborn little bitch, and Aquarius is just like this weird person who's just really weird, and it's like, Capricorn, just shut the fuck up, you're weird. And you're just not going to accept it because you're a fucking bitch. 
But anyways, um, when it comes to, um, Virgo, um, you know, they criticize. They'll tell you what you don't want to hear, but you gotta hear. You know, like I said, it's a sign of work, health, and service, so when it comes to work, they'll do whatever they have to do. Whatever's in front of them, and they'll be like, yeah, this is what I see in front of me, and is what is in front of you, so we gotta tackle this. And that's what they do. Virgos are very detail-oriented, that's why I mentioned DIY. You know, maybe DIY YouTube channels or VidMe channels at Virgo Midheavens, you know, not the channel, maybe the channel, who fucking knows. But I mean like the person behind the channel or the people behind the channel, maybe one of them does. Um, also Taurus. But you know what? Anyway, so, you know, Virgo's very detail-oriented. This is also the mathematical side of Mercury. Um, Gemini's more language and, you know, Virgo's math and math <laughs> as a subject. So they do focus on details and they try to get everything just right. You know, this is also the sign of fa that focuses on perfection. Um, so when it comes to their projects, you are damn right that they'll do their best in that they will fix everything, they'll nitpick. They won't just say, you know, do one thing once and then, you know, th you know, be all good with it. You know, they'll have rough drafts. They will draft the fuck out of things. You know what I mean? That's basically Virgo, um, in a nutshell. The projects will be definitely put together. They're online personality will be definitely put together. Um, they may not be online all the time, and they may just have, like, this aesthetic Instagram or something, but you know what? They're pretty put together, and you might not like them sometimes, but you know what? You have to admit, they have your their shit together more than you do. But basically, um, uh, what's it? Examples? Uh, I'm not mentioning Gordon Ramsay, because he's not one, but, um, Let's see, Jennifer Lawrence and Lord. I talked about Lord in a vlog. You should totally watch it. No, I'm kidding. Um, so basically, Jennifer Lawrence, uh, she was like the good, like, you know, she shows the good and bad sides of the Midheaven. Basically, you know, at first, you know, she was cast as Katniss in The Hunger Games, and Katniss is a pretty selfish character, and you can kind of see that because she volunteers tribute to basically be in this, like, thing where she has to kill people. Like, you know, I don't even know. You get the point. But yeah, you know, she played a selfless character and when it comes to actors, they usually play characters that resemble their midheaven. Uh, so, fun fact, if you want to guess, like, some random ass actors, um, midheaven, yeah, look at what characters they're playing. <gasps> but anyways, um, but, you know, the bad side of Virgo is that they're a little stubborn. They're not too stubborn, though. They're just a little bit, you know. Sometimes they will not admit they're wrong. and But most of the time they do. It's just sometimes they don't because, you know, they're still, you know, existent. And we all get a little stubborn sometimes. So, basically, um, she rubbed her ass on sacred rocks or some shit. And that was fun. She, like, did not apologize for that. And she's like, no, I'm not apologizing for that, sweaty. But basically, um, you know, she also has a Sagittarius Ascendant, so honestly, that, that, that is how it came out. Because Sagittarius has no filter, you know, you gotta understand what Sagittarius is that they do not think before they speak, and that's kind of, that's the sign that mostly represents the foot and mouth disease. You know, the sign after a Capricorn is the not-so-foot-and-mouth disease sign, but Sagittarius, yeah, like, they're, they don't give two shits. But basically, also, there's Lord. You know, Lord's a different story. She doesn't have a Sagittarius ascent. She has a Capricorn one. So you think she's either really beautiful or really intimidating. But also, she has Jupiter there, so I guess she has some Sagittarian qualities, but she also has Uranus and Neptune in her first house, and probably some other stuff that I don't know about, because I don't, I don't have a picture of a Lord's birth chart in front of me, and I don't read it every fucking day. But basically, um, that's what's going on in her Ascendant. Whenever you see her in interviews, she is very quirky, and you're like, I don't know how to feel about her. She seems kind of intimidating, she seems kind of weird. And she seems kind of amazing, but I don't, I don't know how to... What? But what is Lord? 
Anyways, how does like her Virgo Virgo Midheaven relate to her? Well, she um, waited a long ass time to release an album. She just released an album this month. I think she did. Yeah, it was June 8th. I need to still listen to it. But no, it's probably fuck it. But anyways, when she took a long ass break between albums. And I think this is because she wanted to perfect it. She wanted to make sure emotions were in it. You know why I say that? Because her moon's in her 10th house. And so that, you know, adds a little cancer, you know, emotional side to her midheaven. You know, she wanted to make sure her emotions were ex expressed in a way that she'd like them to. In that she did not make a very, um, let's see, generic pop album. She made sure that it was a pop album that can relate to the alternative crowd as well, and that was honest to her. When it comes to Virgo, they are honest. They're not Sagittarius, I am gonna say whatever the fuck comes out of my mouth honest. But you know, they, they want to be true to themselves, and that's what Laura does with her music in a sense. She does not want to throw out bullshit, and, make sh and you know, she wants to throw out perfection, and she doesn't want to be called out for throwing out bullshit, so she's just not gonna fucking throw out bullshit. Let's move on. Okay, number seven, Libra. So this is Airy Venus. Um, the thing about Airy Venus is, like Earthy Venus, they like to take their time. But Airy Venus wants to mediate what is useful and what is not useful. Unlike Taurus, which, who just like works really hard and tries to figure out what goes with what. You know, Libra likes to think. And that's just what, that's literally Libra. They think on things. They think before they speak. And they need to figure out what is nice, what is useful, what can be put to use when it comes to projects and they don't want to put anything useless, and they want to give effort, in a sense. And they want to make sure it does appeal to them. Like, you know, when Venus gets into something that doesn't appeal to them, they slack off like crazy. And, you know, Libra's not an exception to it. You know, they have to make sure that they like it, and they have to make sure others like it, and they have to just make sure others are on board and that they're on board themselves. And that's how they lead, basically. They don't have to be a leader, but they are, they can be. You know, they're, they are a cardinal sign. They lead through others, basically. You know, they take others' ideas and they put them to use. And they put their own ideas to use if it, you know, makes sense with the project. So, you know, that's what's up with Libra Midheavens. They make sure everyone's involved. Um, that there's not much conflict. They don't like conflict. They make sure that everyone everyone has an input, that they have an input, that they can, you know, put all those inputs to use and say, yep, that will help us, that will not. And, you know, like the Venusians they are, they do need to take their time to figure out what is useful, what is not, and what is appealing and what is not. They do need to put the glitter on the words again because, you know, that's just how Venus is. They want to perfect things and, you know, that's just how it goes. Um, for an example, I guess I'm not using examples anymore. Like, <laughs> um, for Virgo, I used Gordon Ramsay and he doesn't even have Virgo in heaven, but he has, like, the ton of sixth house shit. But for, you know... This one, I have to say Haley Williams, and we don't even know how her chart looks like, but if I were to guess, um, she'd have first house stellium and Capricorn, and she'd have a Libra Midheaven, because, you know, people... Alright, so when it comes to celebrities, like I said, people think of the Midheaven first when they're trying to guess their Ascendant, because they don't see their Ascendant. They see whatever's on here. And, um... When it comes to Haley Williams, she made sure the rest of Paramore was noticed when they were a thing, they're still a thing. But you know, when they were, you know, a fetus band, she made sure the rest of the members were noticed and that wasn't just that Haley Williams band. But honestly, people do still think it's that Haley Williams band and she's just like, no, the, 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 those are the Faro brothers, fuck off. So she doesn't really say fuck off, but you kind of get the point because you know, she's a leader of Midheaven, she's nice and... Polished. I'm a Capricorn Midheaven. I'm kind of polished, but 
I'm still rude as heck. So there you have it. But basically, you know, Haley Williams also went into an artsier um, career path and, you know, she made hair dye and she's done songs with other people. She's collaborated with other people. And I think that's kind of most of her career as we know it. She was with other people throughout the whole entire time. And when there's conflict, she got stressed out as heck. And that's where After Laughter came in. And honestly, that's still a pretty lit album and I can't stop listening to Rose Colored Boy and I, th this is not a music talking video, fuck. Thank you.